Hey guys, what's going on? This is Ipsec, and we are going to do the Devel machine. As a heads up, this machine will be 100% Metasploit, not doing anything outside of it. I did want to do something with Empire, but I don't know enough about ASP to code the Empire loader. And quite honestly, just did not have time to look into it. Long story short, the hack the box code was supposed to retire optimum but a glitch has happened and this box got retired right after i recorded the optimum video which is all through powershell one lighters no metasploit etc but since this box got retired and we didn't want to tell the computer it was wrong because that's how skynet happens we're just going to run through this quickly with metasploit which is how i did it initially so let's jump in so, like every other box, we're going to end map with SC, safe scripts, SV, enumerate versions, OA, I'll put all formats, and we'll call the file nmap, the IP address, which is 10.10.10.5. I have already ran this, so let's look at the results, and we see something interesting. FTP is open, as well as HTTP. HTTP, not a surprise, but that FTP definitely is. We do see it running IIS, which is a Microsoft web server. And of course, FTP being open is interesting, as I said. So let's go over to the IP address, which is 10.10.10.5. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, and we see the default welcome page. If we view this image, we see welcome.png. Going to our FTP server, we see welcome.php. If we go to iisstart.htm, that's probably going to be what we assume is index.html, the default page of a website. So there we have it. The FTP server likely is in the same route as the HTTP server. So if we upload a script there, we may be able to view it through the HTTP server. So let's FTP to 10.10.10.5. Users anonymous, because that's what our nmap said. We have anonymous access. And then the password, it doesn't matter. I assume you know I can't type that fast, so it's a random password that just still lets me in. Doing a DIR shows the same files we know exist, so let's create a file and do echo ipsec, and we'll call the file test. And then we're going to upload the file via put and test. So do a DIR now, the file test exists on that web server. If we go try to view it, oops, we still get a 404 not found. So that is a bit odd. If a file doesn't have an extension, it's giving us a 404. If we rename test to test.html, is that still going to happen? So let's delete test and then put test.html there. And we have successful execution of this. The next thing is, it is a IIS server, and IIS does execute code, generally ASP or ASPX. 2000, uh, let's forward this real quick, so I can make sure I'm 100% right before I say anything. If we go here, we have IIS 7.5, which I believe is 2008, but we can easily Google this. If we do, um, well, let's turn intercept off, and then just put IIS versions. Is Google going to tell us this immediately? Yes. 7.5 is 2008 or 2. So it's either going to be ASP, which is just VB script based or ASPX, which is .NET based. If it was 2003, I'd lean towards ASP, but since 2008 is relatively recent within the last decade, I think that's going to be .NET based and going to be ASPX. So that's where we're going to take this. If we go into MSF Venom, so I'm going to exit this, create a new shell, and do MSF Venom dash H. And I'm just going to grep for Windows to show us all the payloads. Actually, before I do that, MSF Venom dash H. And we'll see how this binary actually works. So we have dash P for payload. And we will also need dash F for format and dash O for out. 
Those are the three flags we'll need for MSF Venom. If you don't know what MSF Venom is, it's just going to build us a Meterpreter session, essentially. So we can do MSF Venom dash L to list all available payloads. So MSF Venom dash L. I'm just going to grep this for Windows to show us only Windows payloads because we don't care about Solaris, Linux, OS X, etc. And this does take a few seconds to run, and we get a bunch of results. So we're going to do Windows Meterpreter Reverse TCP is what I want, because I know that's always going to work. If we just did like the 64-bit, it may not work if it's a 32-bit machine. Actually, it will not work if it's a 32-bit machine. If we do the 32-bit version, a 64-bit uh, machine, it's still going to work. So this is the safest one to use first. So MS at Venom, dash P for payload, dash F is the format, and we're going to say it's an ASPX file, and we're going to specify the file name is ipsec.aspx. And this is going to create us a ASPX file that loads Meterpreter. So if we view the file, we do see magic. And if we go back up to MS of Venom help, we could probably list all the different formats. So if we do dash dash help dash formats, it'll list all the different files we can do. So MSF Venom dash H help formats while that loads we can upload ipsec.aspx, uh, put ipsec.aspx, not connected. So the server closed connection on us, log back in, and then put ipsec.aspx. And that did not, oh, I have dash h. There we go. So. The next step is to load Metasploit with MSF console. And what we have to do is load a listener that is going to listen for the web server trying to load Meterpreter. So we're going to use exploit multi handler, show the options, doesn't have much. So we want to set the payload to the same thing we just used, which was Windows Meterpreter reverse TCP. And now we show options, we can see what we can do. So we can do set L host to our IP address, which is ton zero. And when we run this, we see it started a reverse TCP handler on the IP port 4444. And that is something I forgot to do in my MSF Venom. So Here's all the different types of extensions you can give it. But before we go into that, we have to go back here and say lhost equals 10, 10, uh, 14, 17, which is my IP. L port equals 4444. 4, 4. But it can do ASP, ASPX, ASPX, EXE, Access, DLL, ELF. It does a bunch of different formats. We're just doing ASPX because we assume this is what the web server will be able to execute. So delete ipsec.aspx and then put the new version. And then we can go to 10.10.10.5 ipsec.aspx. And before I hit enter, let's go over to a Ruby window. And we should see instantly we get Meterpreter Session 1 has opened. So do sessions-i1 and sysinfo is the first thing I do on Meterpreter. We see the architecture of the machine is 32-bit or Meterpreter is 32-bit so that is good. It is a Windows 7 box and then I normally do a shell and do system info and this normally tells us the hotfix is installed. In this case, it says NA. So chances are this machine has never been updated. We also see the boot time, the install date, version, and service back. So not much information there. So we can exit out of this, background the session, 
and search for suggest because we want to use this local exploit suggester. So if we use this, show options, set the session to one because that's what our Metropolis session is, and then run this, it's going to check for a bunch of exploits that are potentially available for this machine. So right now it's collecting them and it takes a little bit but once it does it will say. I'm guessing it's going to check around 40 different exploits. We should see in just a second. If this machine wasn't so slow a second. Since it's slow maybe 10 seconds. So here we go. It is checking and we have one from 2010, this kit trap. We have essentially every exploit since 2010. So chances are what we saw is the machine had it been updated since it was installed and Windows 7's release date. wonder when that was. Windows 7 release date. 2009. So chances are this is just off the standard regular install CD. So we're just going to use the first exploit, show options, set session is equal to one, show options again, and when I do run, it's going to set my L host to something that's wrong. And I just want to show this real quick. Yeah. So it's doing the exploit, but doing it on 192.168. We want to set, and now, since we ran it once, Metasploit tells us it's using this payload, and this is the L-host. So we want to set this to be 10, 10, 14, 17, and run the exploit again. Uh, we can change the port. And we may just re-exploit this box because it's not immediately going to something. So when I control C it out, something weird happened. So let's go sessions one, exit out of that, multi-handler, make sure that's running, refresh my exploit, and we should get a callback. We actually crashed the box. That That is unique. So when it couldn't get to the host, something happened, which caused this box to go down. Very hard. If I try to ping this, let's just verify. Ping 10, 10, 10, 5. That's 4. It's online. There we go. It came back up. And session two has been opened. Okay. So, yeah, it probably blue screened of death. So, um, what is it? It's net server statistics, I think. Uh, net statistics server. There we go. Time since 10.14.7.43. If we do date... Uh, no. God. How do I specify what time? Uh, see. Well... I'm at 15.44, and this is probably in Greece, and that sh looks like it was a minute ago. I don't know the flag for date. My bad. So, yeah, this box literally just got rebooted because we messed up that exploit. So. Background. Let's redo this, because that wasn't backgrounding for whatever reason. Session 3 is opened. Okay, so we're going to do ms10. Set session is equal to 3. That L host is the correct value. When we run this, 
exploit finished, sending stage, Metopita 4 has opened, and we can do a shell, who am I, and what NT authority system. So that is Develop Machine. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and next week will be a better one, I promise you. And between then, I'll probably do a video on reversing malware. So stay tuned.